everyone. Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of VMware Explorer 2022. We are at Moscone West. Lisa Martin and Dave Nicholson here. Excited, really excited. Or as they were saying in the VMware keynote, pumped and jacked and jazzed to be back in person with a lot of folks here. Keynote was standing room only. We've just come from that. We've got a couple of guests here from Expedient going to unpack their relationship with VMware. Please welcome Brian Smith, the Senior Vice President and Chief Strategy Officer at Expedient, and Brent Meadows, the Vice President of Advanced Solution Architecture at Expedient. Guys, it's great to have you on the program. Appreciate it. We're going to have this on. Yep, Isn't welcome. it great to be back in person? It is phenomenal to be back. So let's talk about, obviously, three years since the last, what was called VMworld, so many dynamics in the market. Talk to us about what's going on at Expedient. We want to we want to dig into cloud different, but kind of give us a lay of the land of what's going on, and then we're going to uncrack the VMware partnership as well. Sure. So Expedient, we're a full stack cloud service provider. So we have physical data centers that we run, uh, and then have VMware based cloud. And we've seen a huge shift uh, from the client perspective, you know, during the pandemic and how they've really responded, you know, from. Everything pre-pandemic was very focused with you know, cloud first and trying to go that uh, route only with hyperscaler. And there's been a big evolution with how people have to change how they think about their transformation to get the end result they're looking for. Talk about cloud different and how, what it's helping customers to achieve as they are everyone's in this accelerated transformation. Yeah, so cloud different is uh, something that Expedient branded. It's really about how the transformation works. And traditionally, you know, companies thought about doing their transformation, and first they kept everything in-house that they were doing, and they started building their new applications out into a hyperscale cloud. And what that really was, is like, a good analogy would be, it's like living in a house while you're renovating it, and I know what that's like for my relationship, uh, versus if you build a new house or move to a, a new property that's completed already. And that's really the difference in that experience from a cloud different approach from transformation is, you think of all the things that you have internally, and there's a lot of technical debt there. And that's a lot of weight that you're carrying when you're trying to do that transformation. So if you kind of flip that around, and instead you know, look to make that transformation and move all that technical debt into a cloud that's already built to run those same types of applications, a VMware-based cloud, uh, you can remove all of that noise, move into a curated stack of technology, and everything just works. You know, it has the security in place, it, it, your uh, teams know how to run it, and then you can take that, that time you really reclaim and apply that towards you know, new applications and new things that are strategic to the business. That's really critical to get, Brent, to get folks in, in the IT organization across the business really focused on strategic initiatives rather than a lot of the mundane tasks that they just don't have time for. Brent, what are you hearing in the last couple of years with the dynamics we talked about, what are you hearing from the customer? Right, so one of the big things and the challenges in the current dynamic is kind of that staffing part. So as the people have built their infrastructure over the years, there's a lot of tribal knowledge has been created during that process, and every day more and more of those, uh, that knowledge is walking out the door. So taking some of that technical debt that Brian mentioned and kind of removing that so you don't have to have all that tribal knowledge, uh, really standardizing on the foundational infrastructure pieces allows them to make that transition and not have to carry that technical debt along with them as they make their uh, digital transformations. We heard uh, a lot this morning in the keynote, guys, about customers going, most of them still being in cloud chaos, but VMware wanting them to get to cloud smart. What does right. that mean, Brian, from Expedient's perspective? What does cloud smart look like to Expedient and its customers? Yeah, we, we completely agree with uh, that message, and it's something we've been uh, preaching for a couple years in part of that cloud different story. And it's really about having a consistent wrapper across all of your environments. It doesn't matter if it's things that you're running on premises that you're, uh, that's uh, legacy, to things that are in like a VMware based cloud, like an expedient cloud, or things that are in a hyperscale, but having one consistent security, one consistent automation, one consistent you know, cost management really gives you the governance so that you can get the value out of cloud that you were hoping for and remove a lot of the noise and uh, think about less about the technology and more about what the business is, is getting out of the technology. So what does that look like as, as a practical matter? Uh, I imagine you have customers whose on-premises VMware environments look different than what you've created within Expedient Data Centers. I'm thinking of things like uh, the level of adoption of NSX, sure. uh, how well a customer may, may embrace vSAN on-prem, as an example. Uh, is part of this transmogrification into your data center um, kind of nudging people to adopt frameworks that are really necessary for success in the future? 
and it's less of a nudge because a lot of times as a service provider, we don't talk about the technology, we talk more about the outcome. You know, so uh, the nice thing with VMware is we can move you know, that same virtual machine or that container into the platform, and the client doesn't always under, uh, know exactly what's underneath because we have that standardized VMware stack, and it just works. And that's part of the beauty of the process. I don't know if you want to talk about a specific client or... Yeah, so one of the ones that we worked with uh, is Bob Evans Foods. Uh, so they were kind of in that transformation stage of refreshing not only their office space and their data center, but also their VMware environment. So we helped them go through and first thing is kind of looking at their existing environment, figuring out what they currently have because you can't really make a good decision of what you need to change until you know where you're starting from. So we worked with them through that process, uh, completely evacuated their data center. And from a business perspective, what that allowed them to do as well is have more flexibility in the choice of their next uh, corporate office because they didn't have to have a data center attached to it. Um, so just from that data center perspective, we gave them some flexibility there but then from an operations perspective, really standardized that process, offloaded some of those menial tasks that you mentioned earlier, and allowed them to really look more towards business driving projects instead of just trying to keep those lights on, keeping the backups running, et cetera. Brian, a question for you, as here we are at, the, the theme of the event is the center of the multi-cloud universe, which seems like a Marvel movie. I, I haven't seen any superheroes yet, but I suspect there might be some here. But as customers, end up and land in multi-cloud by default, not by strategy. Sure. How does Expedian and VMware help them actually take what, the environment that they have and, and make it strategic so that the business can achieve the outcomes, you know, improving revenue, finding new, new revenue streams, new products, new routes to market to delight those customers. How do you turn that kind of cloud chaos into a strategy? Yeah, I'd say there's a couple different components. One is really time. How can you give them time back for things that are creating noise and aren't really strategic to the business? And so if you can give that time back, you know, that's the first way that you can really impact the business. And the second is you know, through that standardization, but also a lot of times when people think of that new standard, they're only thinking if you're building from scratch. And what VMware's really helped is by taking those existing workloads and giving a standard that works for those applications and what you're building new and bring those together under a kind of common platform. And so it's had a really significant impact to the speed that somebody get, can get to that cloud operating model. You know, that used to be a multi-year uh, process and most of our clients can go from really everything or almost everything on-prem and a little bit uh, in a cloud to a complete cloud operating model on average in four to six months. Wow. So, if I have an on-premises environment and some of my workloads are running in a VMware context, uh, VMware would make the pitch in an agnostic way that, well, you can go and deploy that on top of a stack of infrastructure in anybody, anywhere now. Um, why do customers come to you instead of saying, oh, we'll go to pick your flavor of hyperscale cloud provider? What's, what's, your, what's kind of your superpower? You've mentioned, you've mentioned a couple of things, but really hone it in on why would someone want to go to Expedient? Yeah, in a single word, service. I mean, we have a 99% client uh, retention rate and have for well over a decade. So it's really that expertise that wraps around uh, all the different technology you know, so that you're not worried about what's happening and you're, you're not worried about trying to keep the lights on and doing the firefighting. Uh, you're uh, really focused on the business. And you know, the other way to, I guess another analogy is, if you think about a lot of the technology and the way people go to cloud, it's like if you've got a, a set of Legos without the box or the instructions. So you can build stuff, it could be cool, but it, you don't really, you're not going to get hold, to that hold, end state. Hold on, that's, that's how Legos used to work. Right. <laughs> Just maybe, maybe, you're, maybe you're too young to remember yeah, do you a you see time their sales go up when as they had sets? <laughs> because <laughs> now, now you buy a different set right. for this. I build those sets with my son, but I do it grudgingly. Do you ever step on one? I, of course I do. Yeah, there's some pain involved. Yeah. Same thing happens in the transformation. So like when they're buying services from an expedient, you're buying that box set where you have a picture of what your outcome's going to be, the instructions are there, so you also have confidence that you're going to get to the end outcome much faster than you would if you were trying to assemble everything yourself. Yeah, <laughs> in my mind I'm imagining the things that I built with Lego before there were instructions. No Death Star? No, nothing close to, <laughs> nothing close to the Death Star. Definitely something that you would not want your information technology to depend upon. Got it. Brent, we've seen, you know, obviously, it seems like every customer these days, regardless of industry, has a cloud-first initiative. They have competitors in their rear view mirror who are, if they're able to be more agile and, and faster to market, are a potential huge competitive threat. 
as we see the, the rise of multi-cloud in the last 12 months, there's also been a lot of increased analyst coverage for alternate specialty hybrid cloud. Talk to us about, Expedient was in the recent Gartner Market Guide for Specialty Cloud. How are these related when what's driving this constant change out in the customer marketplace? Sure, so a lot of that agility that clients are getting and trying to do that uh, digital transformation or refactor their applications requires a lot of effort from the developers um, and the internal IT uh, practitioners. So by moving to an, a model with an enterprise cloud like Expedient, that allows them to get a consistent uh, foundation level for those uh, kind of the technical debt, the quote unquote traditional workloads, where they can start focusing their efforts more on that uh, refactoring of their applications to get that agility, to get the flexibility, to get the market advantage of uh, time to, to market uh, with their new refactored applications. That takes them uh, much faster to market, allows them to get ahead of those competitors. If they're not already ahead of them, uh, get further ahead of them or catch up the ones that may have already made that uh, transition. And I would add that the analyst coverage you've seen in the last nine to 12 months really accelerate for our type of cloud because before everything was hyperscale. Everything's going to be hyperscale. And they realized that you know, companies have been trying to go to the cloud really for over a decade, really 15 years, that digital transformation but most companies, when you look at the analysts, say they're about 30% there. They've hit a plateau. So they need to look at a different way to, to really approach that, and they're realizing that a VMware-based cloud or the specialty cloud providers give a different mode of cloud. Because you had a pendulum that was everything was on-premises, everything sw swung to cloud first, and then it swung to multi-cloud, which meant multiple hyperscale providers, and now it's really landing at that equilibrium where you have different modes of cloud, you know, so it's similar like if you want to travel the world, you don't use one mode of transportation to get from one continent to the other. You have to use different modes. Same thing, to get all the way to that cloud transformation, you need to use different modes of cloud, an enterprise cloud, a hyperscale cloud, working them together with that common management plane. And with that said, Brian, where have customer conversations gone in the last couple of years? Obviously, this has got to be an executive level, maybe even a board level conversation. Right. Talk to us about how your customer conversations have changed. Have the stakeholders changed? Has things gone up the stack? Yeah, the business is much more involved uh, than what it's been in the past. And some of the drivers even through the pandemic, as people reevaluate office space, you know, a lot of times data centers were part of the same building. Or they were added into a review that nobody ever asked, well, why are you only using 20% of your data center? So now that conversation is very active and they're reevaluating that and then the conversation shifts to where's the best place? And that's a lot of the conference also talks about the, the best place for your application, put the workload in the right location. My role here is to dive down into the weeds constantly, to stay away from business outcomes and things like that. Uh, but somewhere in the middle, there's this question of um, how what you provide is consumed. So fair to, fair to assume that often people are moving from a CapEx model to an OpEx model where they're consuming yep. by, the, by the glass, by the drink. Um, wh uh, what does that mean organizationally for your customers? And do you, do you help them work through that journey, reorganizing their, their internal organization to take advantage of cloud? Is that something that Expedient is a part of or do you have partners that help them through that? How does that work? Yeah, there's some unique things that an in enterprise doesn't understand when they think about what they've done on-prem versus a service provider is there's whole models that they can purchase with us in consumption, not just the physical hardware, but licensing uh, as well. Do you want to talk about you know, how clients actually step in and start to do that evaluation? Sure, so it really kind of starts on the front end of evaluating what they have. So going through an assessment process because traditionally if you have a big data center full of hardware, you've already paid for it, so as you're deploying new workloads, it's quote unquote free to deploy. But when you go to that cloud operating model, you're paying for each drink that you're taking. So we want to make sure that as they're going into that cloud operating model, that they are right sized on the front end. They're not over provisioned on anything that they're going to just waste money and resources on after they make that transition. So it's really about giving them great data on the front end, doing all that collection from a foundational level, from a infrastructure level, but also from a business and IT operations perspective, and figuring out where they're spending not just their money, but also their time and effort in helping them streamline and simplify those IT operations. Let's talk about one of the other elephants in the room, and that is the, the remote hybrid workforce. Obviously, it's, it's been a, the two and a half years, which is hard to believe. I think I'm one of the only people that hates working from home. Most people, do you too? Okay, good, thank you, we're normal. Absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, VMware was talking about that, talking about desktop as a service. There was so much change and, and quick um, temporary platform set up to accommodate offsite workers during the pandemic. 
What are some of the experiences that your clients are having and how is Expedia plus VMware helping businesses adapt and re really create the, the right hybrid model for them going forward? Sure, so as part of being that full stack cloud service provider, desktop in that remote user has to be part of that consideration. And one of the biggest things we saw with the pandemic was people stood up what we call pandemic VDI, very temporary solutions. And you saw the news articles that they said, we did it in 10 days. And you know, how many big transformational events do people plan and execute in 10 days that transform their workforce? So now they're having to come back and say, okay, what's the right way to deploy it? And do you want to talk about some of the specifics of what we're seeing in the adjustments that they're doing? Sure, so it is, when you look at it from the end user perspective, it's how they're operating, how they're getting their tools to do their day-to-day -day job but it's also the IT administrators that are having to provide that service to the end users. So it's really kind of across the board, it's affecting everyone. So it's really kind of going through and helping them figure out how they're going to support their users going forward. So we've spun up things like uh, VMware's desktop as a service, uh, providing that multi-tenant ability to consume on a per desktop basis. Uh, but then we've also wrapped it around with a lot of security uh, features. So one of the big things is as people are going and distributing uh, where they're working from, that data and access to data is also opened up to those locations. So putting those protections in place uh, to be able to protect the environment and then be able, if something does get in, to be able to detect what's going on. And then of course, with a lot of the other components, being able to recover those environments. So building the, the desktops, the end user access into the disaster recovery plans. And talk more a little bit, Brent, about the security aspect. We've seen the, the threat landscape change dramatically mm -hmm. in the last couple of years. Ransomware is a household word. I'm pretty sure even my mom knows what that means <laughs> to some degree. Where is that in customer conversations? I can imagine in certain industries like financial services and healthcare with PII, it's, it's absolutely critical to ensure that that data is, they know where it is, it's protected, and it's recoverable, because everyone's talking about cyber resilience these days. Right. Yeah, and it's, if it's not one conversation one, it's conversation 1A. So it's really kind of core to everything that we do when we're talking to clients is whether it's production, DR, or uh, the desktops, is building that security in place to help them uh, build their security practice up. Uh, so we kind of, when you think about it, it's kind of doing it at layers. So starting with things like more advanced antivirus to see what's actually going on on the desktop and then kind of layering above there. So even up to micro segmentation where you can envelop each individual desktop in their own quasi network so that they're only allowed kind of that zero trust model where, hey, if you can get to a file share, that's the only place you should be going, or do I need web uh, apps to get my day-to-day -day job done, but really restricting that access and making sure that everything is more good traffic versus unknown traffic. Yeah. yeah. And, and also on the, you asked about the Cloud Smarter earlier, yeah. and you can really weave the desktop into that because when you're thinking of your production compute environment and your, de your remote desktop environment, and now you can actually share storage together, you can share security together, and you start to get economies of scale across those different environments as well. So as we, we're in uh, August, I think still, yeah, 2022, for barely, a couple barely. more, barely, for a couple more days. A lot of change going on at VMware. Expedient has been America's part, VMware America's partner of the year before. Talk to us about some of the things that you think from a strategic perspective are next for the partnership. That it's definitely, the, the multi-cloud world is here and it's how we can go deeper, how we're going to see uh, that really mature. And one of the things that we've actually done together uh, this year was we worked on a project uh, and evaluated uh, over 30 different companies of what they spend on IT, everything from the physical data center to the entire stack to, to people, and actually built a cloud transformation calculator that allows you to compare strategies. So that if you look at you know, strategy A over a five year period, doing your current transformation versus that cloud different approach, it can actually uh, help quantify the uh, number of hours difference that you can get, the total cost of ownership and the speed that you can get there. So it's things like that that help people make easier decisions and simplify information are going to be part of it. But without a doubt, it's going to be how you can have that wrapper across all of your different environments that, inst that really delivers that cloud-like environment that, that Panacea people have been looking for. Yeah, that panacea that seems like it's, it's, it's critical for every organization to achieve. Brent, last question for you. When customers come to you and they've hit that plateau, they come to Expedient saying, guys with VMware, help us accelerate past this. We don't have the time. We need to get this done quickly. How do you advise them to move forward? Sure, so it kind of goes back to that assessment of what's causing them to hit that plateau. Is it more on the development side of things? Is it the infrastructure teams not being able to respond fast enough to the developers? And really putting a plan in place to really get rid of those plateaus. It could be getting rid of the technical debt, it could be changing the IT operations and kind of that, the way that they're looking at a cloud transformation model to help them kind of get accelerated and get them back on the right path. 
back on the right path. I think we all want to get back on the right path. Guys, thank you so much for joining Dave Thanks and me on theCUBE today, talking about Expedient, Cloud Different, what you're seeing in the marketplace, and how Expedient and VMware are helping customers to succeed. We appreciate your time. Yep, Thanks thank for you. having us. For our guests and Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from VMware Explorer 22. Stick around, Dave and I will be back shortly with our next guest. Thank you.